everyone. I would like to call the meeting to order at 7.04 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, uh, excuse me, Thursday, October 17th. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have an honored guest. Yes. Dr. Annie McKenzie. Yes, we do. <laughs> a favorite staple of the community, you know. <laughs> Um, I, would, person. I would say that we want to bump her up to item three. I would. After our sure. welcome and opening reflections. Right. After the yeah. open reflections and then the confirmation of the clerk's report, I think yeah, we can just go ahead and okay. get that out of the way. Any open reflections from anyone? They, um, when hiking up into White Mountains to see my daughter over the weekend and I would have so little cell coverage. I couldn't tell my wife I got here. I'm okay. And you get, get like one bar here and there. But all the Harris Walls campaign, those texts came in. I couldn't send out. It's like, they must have some superpower. I'm, I'm getting, you know, don't you want to send another contribution? I'm like, uh, the ironies. Interesting. Uh, and my daughter. As part of a, uh, there was so much traffic on the interstate that the search and rescue couldn't couldn't get to the trailhead in time. There was a woman from Boston that broke her ankle up on the Franklin Ridge, mm -hmm. and my daughter uh, had just hiked up with their semi weekly boxes of supplies, dropped it off, and turned around and grabbed you know supplies, and she took one of her roommate and went up and there's a story online from the New Hampshire Fish and Wildlife about how they they dispatched a crew in the interim from the AMC hut and they got up there and found her and got her out of the wind because it was in the 30s with 60 to 80 mile an hour gusts yeah. and she'd been up there since 145 so that they got up there by four or five and got her in a sleeping bag and stayed with her until oh the goodness. search and rescue came. You read about these things. So I didn't get much one-on-one -on -one time with my daughter, but it was exciting and I was proud of her. Yeah, yeah it's like you read about this stuff happening to other people and, and now it's your own family. That must have been so nerve-wracking. Yeah, she couldn't even talk when she got back. For she, you she as like, a parent. Yeah. And you're like yeah. worried. You know, that's, I couldn't, but I'm glad she's okay. Yeah. You know, I'm happy about that. Anyone else? I'm glad to be here. I like this year the foliage is better than last year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm noticing um, there is a holly bush outside in the backyard, and there's very little berries this year. Mm -hmm. Very little berries. Mm -hmm. So, what a holly bush with the berries. Uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the northern robin. Well, it's a robin and it's all gray and they feed, it's the only uh, bird that I've seen that feeds on holly berries. Mm -hmm. So regular robins don't, blue jays don't, mm -hmm. and usually they come in the tree, they nest for the winter and you will see them and they, they're like blue jays, they're very territorial mm -hmm. and they usually have a whole lot of berries, but this year there isn't many. So to me, that goes back to global warming, um, you know, because yeah. it is all about nature. You can tell the change when you look at nature itself. That's, that's, that's interesting because our extended family has a house up in Maine and their trees are going crazy. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just, just like acorns oh, everywhere. So oh, that's, wow. that's interesting. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Nuts. <laughs> Pardon me, <one. laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it'll be house definitely do last year and off years. Mm -hmm. uh, nut trees in general do oh, last year's tree. where there's a lot mm -hmm. and then other years when there's not. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just worried about them. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about all nature. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know they can fend for themselves, but when it's a man made thing that's causing destruction, I want to try to do my best to make it better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I guess we can move on. Um, we can all vote on the approval of the minutes. If anyone wants to review it and have any questions about it, we can go over that before we vote on it. Yeah, I would move to agree uh, to accept them, and then if someone does a second, then we can discuss it. 
Okay, second, but then a okay. discussion. And then discussion. Right, yeah. Um, under confirmed dates, when I wrote these, 14 of November was our confirmed date, but it's not anymore. It's the 21st of November now because 14 to right. town meeting. Town meeting. Okay. So I would like to change that confirmed date at the end. The other dates are right though. But I got that date moved after. After the August 15th meeting. Yeah. So your minutes are actually accurate. <laughs> because that was well, a reminder change. isn't specifically a minute, it's a reminder. Right. It's just a reminder. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this is October, and that's the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Any other discussions about the minutes? Great job. Yeah, I, I think you do a great job each and every time. Well, I very much appreciate you and Joanne chipping in on the things that I missed. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, yeah. taking over you know, past job, seeing that it yeah, really does need to. Do. <laughs> she always does a great job. Um, she really is. <laughs> she was doing this all by herself, and everything was accurate, and no questions asked. And now... Just goes to show she did an excellent job, and I know she's relaxing now. <laughs> Thank you, but they're always with help. I mean, yeah, I know. Know. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. always a team effort. But thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. So we should have a, according to those town rules, we should have a or state rules, we should have a roll call. Okay. So are you in favor? I'm in favor of accepting the minutes with that one little correction. Strong aye. Done aye. Yes. yes. Yeah, Joanne, yes. Joanne, okay. and I do. Yeah, all right. Okay. 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 So now I think we can move on to Dr. Amy Kennedy. Yes. Thank you so much for inviting me. I haven't prepared any sort of presentation. I assume that you would want to have a conversation. If there's a place you'd like me to start in terms of overview or anything, let me know what it is that you're most interested in hearing about or asking about or talking about this evening. So how can I be helpful to you? What what um, what conversation would you like to have? I, I'll start with a question. That's sure. My, I'm interested to know about the percentage of school choice students mm -hmm. who are in the schools, if yeah. you happen to know that. I do. Uh, well, I can tell you the number off the top of my head. Somebody who can pull up Excel can tell you the percentage. Once I tell you the number, there you go. Thank yeah. you for your phone. Big uh, so I should be able to do it in my head, but let's not embarrass me. So the public says, well, good thing she's not teaching them. That's <laughs> right. Uh, so currently, and it does connect with diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah. So it's a great question. Yeah. Currently, we have 523 students total enrolled in pre-K through six, 144 of whom are school choice. Uh, so that is what, roughly 30%? 144? 144. 144, 523? Yeah. And I get 27.5%. All right, so not bad. 27.5%. <laughs> Pre-K through 12th grade. Six. Oh, three grade is 12th grade. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. okay. I was going to say, because I looked yeah. up to it, 2023 numbers of high yeah. school. So pre-K no, through 12. Pre-K through 12. Oh. So yeah. that is our enrollment, I believe, as of today. That might be last week. So there's still oh. some students coming in. We still have uh, movement in the schools. And I think I spoke with you all about this before, and we certainly include it in our equity dashboard. The census in Hadley in 2020, I want to say that the demographic composition of the town of Hadley, I think that those people I, who um, answered census question as white for their ethnicity were roughly 80% of the population in mm -hmm. Hadley. It may have been higher than that. It may have been closer to 82, 85, 85 even. Yeah. Um, that sounds right. It was, I, I've heard that number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, our school population as of last year. So I haven't, we'll finalize our, what's called our October one count where this, where the state pulls mm -hmm. all of our student data and all of their demographic characteristics. Mm -hmm. And then they give it back to us and say, this is what we come up with. But last year, our student population was closer to 
73 or 4 percent white. Mm -hmm. So school choice, you can tell that if we're mm -hmm. only pulling from this community, yeah. that our demographics mm -hmm. would look very different. Mm -hmm. So school choice has helped us to diversify our both of our schools, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. It's great for the students. It's great too. And diversity in a very broad sense. So mm -hmm. race, ethnicity, culture, heritage, linguistic background, mm -hmm. socioeconomic mm -hmm. background, mm -hmm. religion. Um, and this has just been wonderful for the students. So that's our current enrollment. Do you, can I, mm -hmm. well, is there a school capacity and does that school choice bring you to it or there's still room to grow or is that varied by building, you know? Yeah, it varies by building, it varies by how we're utilizing spaces, which corresponds with student needs in any given year. So if there are a number of students who have a lot of related services, and those folks might be like occupational therapists and physical therapists and mm -hmm. behavioral support personnel. They may be utilizing spaces to deliver some of those services. Mm -hmm. But in general, I think about 2010, so before I was a superintendent in school of schools, I believe when Dr. Young was here, the enrollment around 2010, it started to decline probably right around that time. And that has a lot to do with just birth rate overall, mm -hmm. declining population mm -hmm. in the Northeast, in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, mm -hmm. like a lot of the Northeast struggles with out migration mm -hmm. and retaining young families and young professionals. But it was over 700 at the time. And so there's certainly, based on that, there's absolutely room for students in the school. But sometimes, if you ask, and they wouldn't be exaggerating, if you ask some of the adults in the buildings, I'd say, I don't know where we're going to put somebody because, mm -hmm. um, but there's, there is space and there you is room. Your, yeah, to, exactly. To your current conditions. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. probably the perfect way of putting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that, that relates to the question percolating in my mind. And I'm, I'm going to be not super specific, but my question will be specific, mm -hmm. is that I see or I have heard or observed, uh, not just in Hadley, but in other places, mm -hmm. a sentiment that we don't want too many other people coming mm -hmm. into the town because it will overwhelm the school. Mm -hmm. And I asked my daughter the other day, when did you have a big class, Jenny? She was class of 2016. I remember that well. It, yes, <laughs> you know my daughter. Of course and I do. she said, my class had 54 students. Then I went online to look up the, uh, the numbers online are for last year, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. And last year in the high school, the largest class was the senior class of 44. 44, yeah. Gotcha. And the freshman class is 26. Mm -hmm. And I thought, mm -hmm. seems to me there's room yeah. for some people mm -hmm. to come. Yeah. 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 You know? Certainly, uh, I don't worry about... Um, I don't, I don't worry about the schools being overwhelmed. I don't worry about school capacity. At, at any time, you can have circumstances where a cluster of students or an individual student has profound needs. Mm -hmm. Although, Mark, you and I talked about this a bit, mm -hmm. that um, I think... I think this is human nature. I'm not saying it's a good aspect of human nature, but I think human nature tends to, to assume that um, somehow it's more likely that if folks are different or from somewhere else, that they are more likely to have intensive needs. But the reality is that someone could live in 01035 mm -hmm. and we could have a cluster of students with intensive needs. So that can happen sure. in any given year, sure. uh, perhaps an individual, as I said, requires a lot of intensive support. Um, but that there's no correlation between level of need mm -hmm. and you know where folks come from, I see. the kind of housing that they live in, the you know, um I, I asked you yeah, about um, income that's good. level because there's a you know there's uh, there are those that assume 
that income level is directly correlated to um, behavior issues. Yeah, and I think that that is an erroneous and unfair assumption. There is research that does connect household income with educational attainment, also connects it with interesting mother's educational attainment mm. more so than father's mm -hmm. as an influencer of child's educational mm -hmm. attainment. Mm -hmm. But um, no, to just assume that household income is a predictor of social emotional need or behavioral uh, needs, I think is uh, imprecise and um, it's just not accurate. And not to mention that it implies on some level that affluence is some sort of prophylactic against any sort of disruptive behavior. And that certainly is not true, right? Yeah, that oh, yeah. you can, oh, yeah. folks, uh, you know, one can amass all kinds of income and it's no guarantee that um, children will have absolutely no needs or behave perfectly. I mean, any parent would say that, right? They get up to stuff. It doesn't really matter. That's just all the income. To state or bring this up, I would like to know the data. This person, I'm not sure who it is that gathered this data because I can tell you from people I know that mm -hmm. are not um, economically set, you know, mm -hmm. their families, their children, mm -hmm. they have all the love in the world. Whereas you can have a family that has so much money and their children are lacking empathy, mm -hmm. their children are lacking social ability, the children are lacking. Um, a sense of equality, not financially, but as race, as mm -hmm. color, as mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you look at stating that if you're low income, basically, that you, you don't get a good education or, you know, there's a lot of statistical information stating if you're low income, you don't graduate. That's, I, I've seen, you yeah. know, normal, I've seen regular, I've seen mid, and I've seen low. And to me, low-income families, they do struggle financially. However, it's more of a family community, and mm -hmm. everyone helps, yeah. and it allows the children to excel. Mm -hmm. And not only do they excel educationally, they have empathy, they have respect for others, mm -hmm. they have a quality within themselves that mm -hmm. when you compare them possibly to a family that actually has, don't want to mention his name, but money, <laughs> you can see that there is a totally different aspect of a character. Mm -hmm. And as as far as, you know, when you said it, it, it's not true at all, I, I've also seen one parent families um, mm -hmm. where the father raised the children mm -hmm. alone and they've grown to be successful. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said I would like to know where this data comes from because if you were to actually go into low-income neighborhoods and see what it entails and see the family members and see the church and the community, mm -hmm. I think a lot of things would change instead of just saying, you know, statistically, low-income people or low-income families, their children are going to be criminals or not receive the proper education or be single parents. A lot of single parents are because of the fact that, you know, the father has to choose to work and it becomes too much for the family. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a lot of, of statistical information as you said that's not true. Yeah. And I certainly want to be very clear that one thing that's most important to me is that I always remember, and I think folks should remember, that um, you know every individual, it, there aren't group characteristics. Mm -hmm. right? There are individuals mm -hmm. within groups, and individuals mm -hmm. can do very well in any group, and sometimes some individuals struggle, and that's true that there's there's no group characteristic oh, that can right. say, um, exists. And, and there are also a lot of opportunities and, and yeah, a lot of opportunities, educational opportunities 
that try that help mm. with so if if somebody doesn't have like some folks have a ton of resources and they are they they're surrounded by folks who take experiences all kinds of experiences for granted you know mm -hmm. maybe maybe everybody in the family mm -hmm. has advanced degrees and so what that means mm -hmm. is you have all of this educational capital that you're not even aware of mm -hmm. we're talking about FAFSAs and how do you apply to college and when you've got to start doing this thing and if someone doesn't have that experience then it's harder to have that information at your fingertips you're 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 mm -hmm. racing to like learn the language and learn what needs to be done. Thankfully, particularly in, in the Commonwealth right now, in order to try to ensure greater equity of access, which in turn turns into greater equity of outcome, mm -hmm. uh, there are things like the College Opportunity Act, I think it's called now. So where we know that now all community college is free. Um, for uh, youngsters who are going to community college. We have early college high school in the high school. So this really helps students uh, if you were not a household. So I, I had two parents, neither one of them ever filled out a FAFSA or had these things, as opposed to some of my friends who had parents that were working in colleges. And so these things, they just, they knew all the tricks. And exactly. I, I didn't have that in my house. That just wasn't our house. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean people didn't love me and we weren't, but we, there, there were folks who were way ahead in the race <laughs> at the outset. And, uh, but there are a, a lot of programs. So in the schools, we have, college and career pathways. We have early college high school. One of the goals of early college high school is to really try to do targeted recruitment, to try to identify students who are historically underrepresented in higher education and in high paying career fields, mm -hmm. which right now correlate most strongly with STEM. That's not to say that people can't have other jobs that they don't really love and don't make a ton of uh, don't do quite well financially, but STEM jobs are growing at an incredibly rapid rate and they compensate very well. And there are entire groups of people that have been historically underrepresented in those fields, just like we have people who have been historically underrepresented in higher education. So early college, high school and innovation pathways seek to identify groups whether that those demographic characteristics are ethnicity, race, uh, first generation college goer, uh, immigrant status, gender, depending on the career field, mm -hmm. and then seeks to really target recruitment for those students and say, hey, have you ever thought about this? Do you, ever, do you know anything about this? Might you be interested? And get them set up so they're well positioned to pursue, if they're interested in these things, to pursue them pursue post-secondary education in these fields to actually start off ahead so students can earn at least uh, 12 college credits completely free of charge yeah. the high school they choose. And that's what you're offering. Yeah. 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 Um, I just want to go back um, and touch back on the resources you were mentioning earlier as far as, you know, one family may have information about FAFSA applications mm -hmm. and so forth, mm -hmm. and then another family may not. Um, I think that is a big disadvantage in low-income neighborhoods, the resources, because low-income neighborhoods are already written off as mm -hmm. you're not doing, you're not going to go far, so why should we offer you this? Why should we put this resource in your community if, you know, certain amount of percentage of people are doing this already, but that is a stigma. And mm -hmm. that causes a domino effect mm -hmm. of poverty. Mm -hmm. If we do not have proper resources to provide to our children, like you do in Hadley mm -hmm. in the school, then we different ethnicities and race and, and cultures and are not going to be able to be provided with the proper um, jobs to survive and move ahead in, mm -hmm. in the world. So I, if I was able to, if I could, I would would love to actually, you know, 
try to reach out and provide these resources. You know, um, I last year, well, about a year and a half, uh, did create a project with because I'm on the Friends of the Library, a project where all of the books that were recycled in the library and we were no longer going to need, mm -hmm. um, and then we provided to a different library. I would take those and I chose a school in the north end of Springfield mm -hmm. and I would bring those books and DVDs to that school so this way they can have access to literature and information that they would normally not even have a chance to view. Mm -hmm. So this was going on for almost a year and a half, like I said, and mm -hmm. they are so grateful. And this school is from elementary to high school. They have mm -hmm. their own library and it is semi underprivileged. Mm -hmm. So doing this, the books that I received, I would just look through the books. I, I just felt so much joy in my heart mm -hmm. that these children can read a Dickens book. Mm -hmm. These children can read a, a book that they've never, the author has never heard of, mm -hmm. and sit down in their room or or wherever they have peace, because not every child has peace at home, mm -hmm. and just sit down and, and indulge in the book and let themselves go. Mm -hmm. So you know, and also I offer to because the uh, classroom. So there's a classroom that I I um, also gave the DVDs to its mm -hmm. autistic children mm -hmm. elementary. And she didn't have a uh, DVD player. Mm -hmm. So what I was looking into is buying a DVD player with a screen. Mm -hmm. So this way, you know, the children can actually sit down and watch a movie because when it comes to autistic children, they, you know, sitting in a, a whole, uh, what is it called? Um, auditorium. Auditorium. Oh, yeah. Full of, full of everyone else. They, they can't take that. That's a stimulation. stimulation. Yeah, they, they can't take that. So being in a smaller environment with those that they know and are comfortable with is perfect for them to relax and watch a movie. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking into doing that, but that's where I'm coming as far as resources. Mm -hmm. um, I can only do but so much, and if I could do more, I would, because there are children in underprivileged areas that are so smart I mean so smart and it's mm -hmm. it's such a wasted talent because they do not have the resources mm -hmm. and they get here and that's mm -hmm. it they, they can't go any further mm -hmm. but if they had resources they'd be at the floor and once one person does it in a community not everyone follows, but there'll be a few more that want mm -hmm. to go there as well. And it shows a model, so you can mm -hmm. you can believe it yourself. Like, and you can I know can, it can happen. Can get there. Yeah. And you can you know it can happen. And what I see on TV can happen. You know, mm -hmm. it's something believable. It's just you yeah, know. I think what you're doing in the high school of of making sure kids are aware that college is is achievable, mm -hmm. and that they can even get started on it now is fantastic because you know the, the, the kids in that school might never have considered college and in, in Hopkins no at, at the school you're talking about in Springfield a lot of those kids might not necessarily think that college is for them at all oh no and, they do okay they good. just don't have the resources right to but they need so to be they prepared. do have to go to college yeah, yeah. They, they are very smart prepared. there are yeah. children that are grade above average yeah. mm -hmm. but they good. just do not have the resources right. or the information right to look at okay go on the internet but some of them do not have a, a computer yeah. right and if they do it's yeah. a very old computer yeah. so yeah. they can't access the gigabytes it takes for them to surf and yeah. even when yeah like you said, even when you have a, a clear desire and an aspiration, and some of these places a tool in front of you. So there's a whole language, there's a whole certain navigating oh, yes. oh, these yeah. hoops to get yeah. into college, you know, right? Oh, yeah. So you do you if you've oh, taken yeah. your children to this, oh, yeah. you know. Oh, exactly. And if to me I say it would be the same as if somebody walked in here and dumped a pile of lumber in front of me and handed me a hammer and showed me a picture of a house and said, Go for it. You know, right. <laughs> well, I have a tool. Where do I, I have a picture? I have an image of what right. I want. Right. But there's a whole way of doing things. Mm -hmm. That other people yeah. who have done this many times. Yeah. Right? right. Could just if if I see them do it, if I watch them do it, like you're saying, people who've then had experiences yeah, and can show then I that's different. Right. right? 
So there is the piece of, yes, people can have all kinds of aspiration. It is important, I think, there are some young people, there are some people, young and old, but some young people who don't see themselves yet as that. They don't see themselves yet as that. They haven't, uh, their experience may be that, um, maybe there it's an acronym, interrupted, I can't, it's slight, and I can't think of what it is, something learning interrupted. Mm -hmm. So, for example, people who may have the experience of traveling long distance to immigrate to this country and traveling mm -hmm. on foot, and their lives have been interrupted, and they just, their first thought is around survival, yeah, and settling yeah. in, and so they're, they they don't see themselves as a college student, or was yeah. something, not yet. And so first, we want to make sure that we see people as we see the potential, we mirror in our own eyes what we hope that they will see in themselves. Mm -hmm. The danger of having a, a painting of broad strokes or thinking a particular group of people has certain characteristics or mm -hmm. if this happens, it will tax the schools that because mm -hmm. then what we're mirroring in our eyes is an expectation, mm -hmm. that's that low expectation. Mm -hmm. Or, um, But instead, we want to, for those who can't yet see themselves as fill in the blank. Right. You're right when you said um, some people may have the resource and they just, because their parents went to college and they just don't want to do it. And that right there is, is kind of breaking the chain of success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, just because uh, everyone else went to college does not mean you shouldn't go. They went to college for a reason. Mm -hmm. They went to college so you can have a better life. They went to college so that they can have a better life. So it's not something where you can sit down and say, oh, well, you know, I can just sit back and don't have to do anything. My parents are putting, you know what, you'll get older. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to wish you did go to college, mm -hmm. you know. So it it it's an it's an all demographics. Mm -hmm. Those that choose to utilize the resources to further their education, and then there are those that do not have the resource and would love to further their education. Mm -hmm. They know about college. They they watch TV. They mm -hmm. go on the internet. They know it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's just. Sometimes when you're in a single parent household mm -hmm. and that parent, be it male or female, mm -hmm. works and you have to take care of your brother mm -hmm. and sister or you have to get another job mm -hmm. because your mother or father was unable to actually get a good job because they were raising you, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. it's it's really a lot. Um, mm -hmm. It's appreciated a, a lot when mm -hmm. um, anyone from a low income neighborhood or disadvantaged community goes to college mm -hmm. because they feel like now they can help others. Mm -hmm. That's that's the thing with a low low income or disadvantaged communities. They help each other. Mm -hmm. They don't just get up and get out. No, they come back and they help. A lot of mm -hmm. other communities they get up and get out and mm -hmm. see you along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, and they just do not come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask, I know you mentioned uh, the DEI in the school, mm -hmm. and you were saying that it is coming along, um, but the funding was last year for this year or this year for last for next year? No, so we have um, a, a variety of ways in which we try to elevate diversity, equity, and inclusion. So each school has a diversity club. The elementary, we talked a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. The elementary students... Uh, they have a number of things that they learn and do. Their big event is in June where they decorate the sidewalk in front of the school. Mm -hmm. Love is love. It's really quite lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think in years past, you folks have heard from Miss Lanham. She's still the advisor yep. of the Diversity Club mm -hmm. at the high school. And those students do, again, a whole host of activities and learning and ways to just foster a sense of inclusion, of belonging, and of appreciation. So we have those two clubs that are student-led. We also had a diversity you met Ms. Jabber last year, mm -hmm. diversity, equity, inclusion, and safe school specialist. So she supports students, supports families mm -hmm. uh, to ensure things like equitable access to opportunities, and helps us with our data analysis around the equitable outcomes. She also manages when we have to respond 
or investigate things. And mm. so she assists yeah. with that. Um, we have also a number of recent state funded grants that had allowed us to provide training to students and to adults in developing the skills and the interpersonal tools, the capacity and competencies mm -hmm. to foster community. And the better we do that, the less likely it is that we will have situations where um, self-centered fear and bias and racism, classism, homophobia, we're less likely to have these incidents. That's not to say that we will never have them. Mm -hmm. I, I, wish I, I wish I could say that. Mm -hmm. Schools are a microcosm. I'm glad you said that. Mm -hmm. so I really am. Um, frequently when things happen in education, and I understand why, the first thing that you'll hear is that um, educational administrators or wherever it happens say, uh, we will not tolerate this and we will eradicate this. And I'm not saying that that isn't a bad aspiration to have, it's a wonderful aspiration to have. But I also realize that schools are microcosms of society. Yeah. And if you add up all the minutes, even if a child had perfect attendance, six hours a day, 180 days a year for 12 years, they spend a lot more time out in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm so glad that this group exists because so often the conversation is what are schools doing about, which we should be, but let's say do the math. They spend right. a lot more time outside of school than they do inside of school. Exactly. Schools are a microcosm. Yeah. So if something is bubbling up in school, mm -hmm. it's because it, it is in the bra it's in the fabric of society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we try to do, so we do know that people will transgress against each other. We will hurt each other. We're human. Right. Sometimes we yeah. behave pridefully yeah. and with self-centered fear mm -hmm. and uh, arrogance and cruelty. So we want to make sure that when things like this happen, we want to minimize the frequency and severity of events. Um, but also when they happen, we want people to have the skills to re-enter relationship, to repair harms, and to re-establish a sense of community. And so some of those things, yeah, recognize, uh, recognize fault when there's fault. Yeah, um, sure. And if somebody is yeah. able to and willing, and if it makes sense, to forgive if that's possible, if it's in, in the best yeah. interest of, of all parties. Yeah. So examples of those programs, restorative justice. We work with Suffolk University. That started about, I want to say, two years ago. I could have my years off, but I think about two years ago. Now, 100% of Hopkins Academy faculty and staff are trained in what's called Tier 1 or Core Restorative Justice. About 50% are trained in Tier 2. So in Tier 2, Tier 1 are practices like in our advisory, which happens every week at Hopkins. There's a curriculum. Students use restorative justice practices like sitting in circle, building community, getting to know one another, processing problems or having conversations. In tier two, that's what you do when there's been a bit of a conflict or there's a bit of a problem and you're trying to solve that. Maybe some students feel as though in a class that peers are having conflict or maybe they want to talk to the teacher or the adult about how they'd like the class to go. They'd like to have more input. So not serious transgressions. Mm -hmm. And then tier three, which about a quarter of the faculty is trained in, that's reserved for much more significant and serious harms. Usually you have one-to-one -one, or maybe an individual has done transgressed in such a way that it's really harmed the community. And then that takes more people with uh, more training yeah, to sure. facilitate a conversation and try to repair the community. So that's one. The elementary school, that looks like something called responsive classroom. So we do things like every morning, they have a morning meeting, ways to establish community. Same kinds of skills are being taught, just in a developmentally age-appropriate way. And it's the elementary school. That's right. the elementary school. Mm -hmm. We have students who have received something called intergroup dialogue training. You folks may be familiar with that, intergroup dialogue. There's a center at UMass, uh, Professor, I think it's Sonia, you get it? No, I think my professor's still on up there. 
Overseas, there is a center. Every other year, they have a conference on intergroup dialogue. So intergroup dialogue are very, it's about teaching people very specific skills to dialogue across difference. Oh, to try okay. to step away from the tendency to debate. I always think that I need to uh, win every discussion or conversation. That the only way that I've succeeded is if I secure complete concession from the other side, which I'm sure you're aware in our society at large. That's oh, kind of what we've drifted to is oh, yeah. this kind oh, yeah. of high conflict, oh, yeah. high polarized. Yes. So in high Serious conflict, yes. yeah. we have to win the argument. Exactly. Right. Um, in, in healthy conflict, that's an Amanda Ripley concept, and we talk about this a lot of, in the school district. In healthy conflict, we can have disagreement. It can even be, oh, we can have dissent disagreement, we can have heated disagreement. But in the wake of heated disagreement, nobody has to lose their dignity. And disagreement need not be divisive. So we can disagree, and I don't have to demand that somebody adopts my point of view. Mm -hmm. The focus is on listening, the focus is on expecting and appreciating the fact that we are probably very different ideologically, maybe in lived experience, and leaning in to learn and listen. So the students have received training in that. We also have received two years running uh, state funding for what's called hate crime prevention. Mm -hmm. So the Collaborative for Educational Services uh, is training groups of students and staff in um, practical skills for identifying and interrupting bias and hate and mm -hmm. what to do to, again, restore community when these things occur. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that we're doing that are meant to be both proactive and responsive and hopefully not just straight reactive. Mm -hmm. I think for a small town like Hadley, that's a bonus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really something that I believe other towns can follow. Mm -hmm. um, you, the school system is doing so much to fight against inequality, be it, you know, a person's disabledness, mm -hmm. race, color, mm -hmm. sex, whatever the indication may be. Mm -hmm. And from what you just described, it's it's like, wow, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who may watch this did not have that in mind that this is what the Hadley schools are doing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, especially when it came down to the incident in the summer. I mean, most people wanted so many bad things to happen to children. Yeah. But mm -hmm. from what you de you described, it makes so much more sense to go about it the way you're, you're stating now. And, you know, the children being trained to be able to sit down and come up with a resolution mm -hmm. or discuss an incident not only makes it a, a safe place for the people in the circle, but also for the person who either was biased against or mm -hmm. was the bias. Mm -hmm. Who they know now that they can talk to someone on their level, and not a parent, not an adult, someone that they can relate to their peers and be able to be honest. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times uh, things happen out of bullying, mm -hmm. you yes. know, out of fitting in. Out of, mm -hmm. I'm the only one, so I'm going to do something and have someone notice me. Mm -hmm. And if they know that there are peers in their environment that they can sit down and relate to, I think it, it would be a better situation for everyone. There's probably nothing more dangerous in society than a lonely and isolated and sad person. Individual. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They are very so yeah. calling people in, mm -hmm. which is someone else's phrase, right? Calling in rather than calling out. I do think young people today are naturally, just intuitively, very receptive to this. Some of it has to do with the fact that they've grown up in an environment of social media. Yeah. And so as they get older in high school, they understand that um, no, nobody in their generation will be able to withstand the kind of scrutiny that says one misstep. Mm -hmm. and you're shunned exactly. forever. It just, there'll be no one left. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? Um, people make mistakes. Young people make a lot of mistakes. So do we. Uh, yeah. I mean, and, and if they We're didn't, stupid. you guys wouldn't need me. So, you know, enough, I don't want to say, hey, kids, keep it up. You make those mistakes. But no, <laughs> they, they need that. They need to learn, like you said, the training yeah. 
the list listening and learning, mm -hmm. learning from what yeah. we've done. Yeah. I'm just gonna jump in with my role from last month. Mm -hmm. Oh, what time is it? Oh, oh my goodness, I'm point so sorry. Clock and say, yes. No, I mean we could go an hour and a half to three hours yeah. to talk yeah, to you can. and try to bulk and mind all as much out. Yes. <laughs> but uh, you're probably on a 12 plus hour day. So yeah. um, you know, maybe we wrap it up in three to five minutes. Uh, any other you know things that we um, you think this is fabulous? Mm -hmm. This is yeah. great. Yeah. I have one other. I just have a quick, uh, just yeah. a quick, I think, my go ahead. Quick, is there's an article on the ballot. Mm -hmm. about the standardized tests. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know if you might share a, a viewpoint, maybe you have one or not, but I'd love yeah. to know. So I can, them. I will share uh, other groups' <laughs> viewpoints and just really quickly and tell yes. you what I think. I will tell you why I don't share my personal viewpoint. That, no, um, that's, that's yeah. good. No, that, that's, that's really what I'm asking. An appointed, yes. not an elected yes, official. Exactly. So as an appointed official, okay. uh, it is, I, I think it is, it's not appropriate for me to share any, uh, my political perspective mm -hmm. on a matter like that. Sure. And also I say all the time that um, I don't want any parent in Hadley Public School. I prefer that nobody had any idea what my politics mm -hmm. are because if a parent, a family has different politics, mm -hmm. I never want them thinking, mm -hmm. huh, exactly. I wonder if she treats yeah. my kid the same. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Right. So, but I will tell you that the Mass uh, Teachers Association is very much vote yes. You're talking about question two. What question two would do would be to eliminate MCAS as a graduation requirement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it does not eliminate MCAS. The same number of tests are given over the same amount of time. The state will still be investing the same amount of money in uh, okay. the testing and accountability system. And the test scores will still be used for school accountability, so our accountability profiles. The one thing that would change is that it would not be a requirement for graduation. Mm -hmm. The Mass right. Teachers Association and the Mass Association of School Committees have both come out in favor of question two. Good. There are, um, there was a couple uh, articles in the Boston Globe where there are organizations that uh, their position is they advocate for voting no on question two. Um, and the reasons that they provide, uh, as a matter of fact, Secretary Tutwiler had Weiler, Secretary of Education, he is uh, a vote no on two person. And his concern is that if there are, so then if there is no uh, uniform standard across the state for graduation, because you essentially have 331 standards for graduation potentially. Mm -hmm. And that, that could possibly result in um, inequitable high school experiences, right? Mm -hmm. schools, some schools may hold very high standards and some mm -hmm. schools may not. So there's mm -hmm. no way, one thing that accountability does, you still have accountability, but one thing that accountability does is it shines a light on any disproportionality in achievement. Mm -hmm. So if there are large groups of, mm -hmm. of students who share a particular characteristic and they are not doing as well as other students year over year, that uniform standard shines a light on them. Mm. Uh, but other people would argue and say um, that tying that to graduation, you could have that without tying to graduation. Mm -hmm. So those are the the two kind of mm -hmm. overly simplified sides of question yeah. two. And, I, and that is, I I was looking yeah. for a viewpoint, not necessarily your personal, but I really like how you worded that. Thank you very much. I like, I've, I've heard an argument that if you if you try to no, if you're going to keep it as a, as a litmus test of graduation, then there's a priority to teach to the test, and that may push in li limited budgets, push other things off the table mm -hmm. that would benefit a more uh, rounded out children. Mm -hmm. And that the test is not always representative of the whole culture. Mm -hmm. but, uh, those are some criticisms yeah. I've heard. I would say there, I believe that there are sophisticated and nuanced arguments on um, both sides of that ballot question, like anything that's worth talking about. Exactly. It's exactly. not a simple exactly. answer. Exactly. And if there's a simple answer, then it's just not worth, it's not worth talking about. Right. 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 So there's always going to be yep. pros and cons for mm -hmm. every yep. every debate, that's right. every solution, every decision. Um, it's mm -hmm. never going to be, as you stated, yes, 
that's mm-hmm. the way you want to do it because it's not working if there's mm-hmm. not anything to talk about. Well, and I wanted and, to, if I may, sure, just the, sure. um, because I just want to make sure in, in practicing the things that, that we hold dear and have in public schools, I want to go back to the very first question and the conversation about um, uh, statistics and correlating. I want to be very clear because I fear that maybe uh, how I said that may have sounded as though I was saying that if if someone has this level of educational attainment or their parents do that, then it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to have limited success. And I just want to be very clear that as in it, as that the only research that I've ever read that does any sort of correlation with outcome, because we were talking about behavior and, and is that, does that in any way correlate with socioeconomic status right. and then kids are going to act up, which is a right. common people apply and that's just I don't know of any research to support that right the only thing that I've ever read which even in my own experience is logical only it's not a foregone conclusion but if you have no one around you who has gone to college completed college it's not impossible it's harder it's, it's harder. just it's harder, harder. because yes. as I said there is yeah. it's like Folks who have that growing up, they're yeah. bilingual and, they're and, and how to do that. To that. Yeah. But if you're not <laughs> exposed to it, yeah, you, don't you don't know. know that's it. that's like, you know, yes. cooking. If someone has always put stuff in the microwave for you growing up, Perfect. you will not know <laughs> how to cook. <laughs> but if you're shown how to cook <laughs> as you're being raised, yeah. right. then you know how to cook. You can show someone else. So again, it just goes according to the resources, and I was examining yeah. it against yeah. others. I just, just wanted to make sure. Whole. Oh, oh no, no, no! Yeah. It's just as a whole, yeah. and I'm glad Mark did bring that up, and then um, mm-hmm. Sarah stated, you know, that some underprivileged kids may not want to go to college, mm-hmm. but it brings out the conversation yeah. that a lot of people do not want to discuss. Yeah. And I'm so happy that we have discussed it, and we have touched upon a sensitive subject yeah. and I appreciate you coming here today. I really do. So I happy thank you. Yeah. And you did think that maybe one meeting we can have um, a student with a leader. Yeah. Uh, sure. That would be great. Like I know, especially toward the end of the year, the elementary students probably would yeah. love to talk about their um, well, you know, the timing. Event. Yeah. So we can look at whatever makes the most sense, but I anything you folks need, and I want to let you know that I'm so grateful for this oh, thank you. committee. Mm-hmm. I just mentioned you all as a partner. I probably should have asked you before I'm announcing it. Now I just <laughs> mentioned you all. Yeah, yeah. And we're writing, uh, wrote today two more grants. We're in the process mm-hmm. of building out our innovation pathways to mm-hmm. also include advanced manufacturing and uh, healthcare and social mm-hmm. assistance professions. Wow. And wow. one of our goals is to make sure that our recruitment is getting equitable access. And again, those mm-hmm. folks who are traditionally underrepresented mm-hmm. in some of these fields, advanced manufacturing, certainly uh, people of color, je- uh, women. Sure. Um, and so I it's mentioned this group. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I mentioned this group and said, you know, it's great that it's that this is a town kind of investment to make right. sure to say mm-hmm. how do we make sure everybody's included and mm-hmm. has equitable access and, and we we want to include everyone yeah mm-hmm. everyone not just race or yeah. color but elderly mm-hmm. and yes. disabled everyone yes. we, we yeah. want the town to know that we're here for everyone and absolutely and absolutely. I think I speak for everyone we would be thrilled to be oh um, yes listed as partner well definitely yeah. you already are yeah, yeah that's good okay <laughs> <laughs> Everybody there, and I'm pleased that you did that, and I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else have any more questions? No? Just keep us posted okay. of any interesting yeah. events that we might want to support, Absolutely. and we'll show up like yeah. a truck with, with the Haitian yeah. dancers yeah. and all that. That was. That, yeah, if that was you have events if you can email. Absolutely. 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 I would go again if they came again. Oh, um, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we could get the love is love to come in around our June Juneteenth. Uh, <laughs> You know, our June, our meetings are always the third Thursday, and that will be somewhere June near Juneteenth, which is often a the theme that we raise. And so maybe students 
or a student could come yeah. in. Or we can make a teacher. special project and just yeah. have them perform outside. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with special projects. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. No, 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 you're not I, you're not at all. Oh, kind of figured we go beyond eight because normally when we have a guest, we go beyond eight o'clock. Oh, so that's okay with me. Have a good one. I appreciate you coming. Yeah, grateful to be here. Great. So the next um on the agenda is the matinee movie. Bye bye. I'm happy to take this on because I will be here tomorrow. Okay, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. And I've been in contact with Violet. Oh, you have? Yeah. Good job. Like several times. Okay. And we're all set. I just saw her last week. Um, I'll be bringing some refreshments. Good. And everyone is welcome, but no pressure. <laughs> okay. That would be nice. I'm glad you're going to go. I was worried about that. Who would be this is our, our, our film to honor Indigenous people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, old business. So the event went well. For the elderly, where I cooked, my son and I. Oh yeah. Yeah. It went. I, it went. I mean, it. Okay, so and Violet. No food to take home. No. Well, <laughs> Violet asked me in the beginning, did I want 30, 40, or fifty people? So I didn't even think thirty people would show up. <laughs> Literally, I did. So I said thirty people within the first week or so. 30 people and people on the wait list. Yeah. I was like, wow, I was so happy because mm -hmm. not only someone said also because it's a free meal, this is happy. And, and if I didn't cook good last year, <laughs> they wouldn't have come this year. <laughs> so again, it was um, jerk chicken, fried chicken wings, and macaroni and cheese and salad. And it, it was just awesome. Everyone loved it. It you know, it was it, it did well. So I am preparing a Thanksgiving meal um, for the elderly. So what I've done with Violet is instead of doing it at the senior center, because now they want to limit it to um, max it out to 15 people. It was just so many people. And you know, wow. just, yeah. Oh. So I'm, I put, uh, Violet's going to put in a newsletter um, that I'm going to do a Thanksgiving meal. It's going to be uh, turkey, mashed potatoes, sweet yams, stuffing, and apple pie. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make that for, you know, whoever signs up. And I'm going to, my son and I, we're going to cook and we're going to deliver it. Oh. So this way it's going to reach a broader range of people that can't make it to the senior center. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there's, there's oh. the staff at the senior center and then there's people that frequent the senior center. I want to reach the people who... On Thanksgiving or alone. Maybe the shut-in. This is what I mean. You know, they're alone. They, they don't have any more family. Or they could be going through something traumatic every Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. And they just... So do you need drivers to deliver? Well, them? I don't even know how many people yet. So mm -hmm. I did put down one week sign up. I learned from the past. Can't just have people. It has to be a one week sign up, which will give me a week to prepare it and then start delivering it the week of Thanksgiving, right? which actually works out because I was going to do it on the 22nd in the senior center, but cooking a turkey at 12 to one, cooking a turkey takes longer than uh, four hours, mm -hmm. especially when you want it juicy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to do one else, but right. <laughs> my turkey is juicy. <laughs> So, yes, I'm going to be doing that, and anyone who receives the seniors newsletter will be on that list. And if you'd like, you can sign up, and I will see my face coming, or my son or my nephew will come and deliver it for you. And is there a way to donate to support that? I mean, if anyone wanted to donate they, around, you know, the week before Thanksgiving, they can. I mean, last um, I received a nice you know, donation from Pat and Joanne and Sarah, mm -hmm. you know, and I appreciate what we've done. Um, it, it was a lot of cooking and 50 pounds of wings. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, 50 pounds of wings, five pounds of macaroni, and I don't know how many pounds of cheese. And then <laughs> it was a lot of work. We did, and but it was just happy to see everyone enjoying it. Yeah. And then I had my grandson there. 
Oh, oh and they just loved him. Oh, they just loved him. Yeah. After the meal, there was an ice cream social, and there was a woman on a stage, she, and she had a screen with the, you know, you just say it's on the screen. My grandson decides to go up on the stage with her, and she's playing the guitar, and he's standing there dancing. <laughs> So he felt at home. Oh my God. It's, it's great. Karaoke dance. Yes, he. <laughs> I was like, he was like, no. So, <laughs> and everyone was laughing and yeah. he's just doing. I mean, he and and to me that brought an extensive amount of joy yeah. to them yeah. Yeah. because not many people, if they do have grandchildren, yeah. see them. Yeah. And then you have this little boy, three years old, almost running around <laughs> saying hi to everyone, oh, I love it. shaking each other's hand, <laughs> yeah. dance. I mean, just, having a good time. Yeah, making yeah. everyone feel good. So he <laughs> really taught them. You know, I love uh, it. He did a great job in making. Oh it. yeah, it was great. Okay, that was that one. Mm -hmm. Um, so the request for the jazz music program at the senior center. Um, did Violet choose which film to host and, and on which date? Yes. Okay. And Mark, is it okay if I report? Yeah. Um, Violet picked the film A Great Day in Harlem, 1958, mm -hmm. um, film about the photo that was taken in oh, Harlem. Good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. You can find it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, it will be shown on the 21st of February at 12.30, and it's in honor of Black History Month. Great. And if I recall, Mark, you agreed to staff this, correct? Yes. Great. I will definitely be able to assist with anything. I'm not cooking. Uh, don't ask. <laughs> Friday? No, it's, it's a Friday. Yeah. The yeah. Friday at 12 Friday. Yeah. That's I, I did have an idea that I'll throw out on the table. I'm not available that day, but I thought it would be fun to play jazz as people came in. Oh, to walk them down to separate towns. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That so would it, be nice. I mean, I'm sure there are mixes you can just get in, right? So that yeah. would be fun. So, how would we be able to? Is, I think you could just use a phone or no, something. No, I thought oh, you, you were going to bring your saxophone like, in. No, yeah. Yeah, no, I will be playing <laughs> elsewhere. It's like next speakers. I thought there were speakers. I, there might be. Violet would know. Yeah, yeah, but I'll, that would be nice yeah, as you're yeah, coming in. Yeah, kind of set the case. Case. I think it would be really, yeah. really nice. Yeah. And the film is only one hour. Too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can do it. I can bring my phone with some jazz song and a little. With yeah. Yeah. Or they'll get those. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. Okay. Is this event? With, with, it's not with a lunch, right? It's just. It's just. No. A film. It's just a film, okay. and then I usually bring something like cookies or I see. Yeah. You know, a sweet bread. Mm -hmm. Some some uh, uh, some snacks. Snacks. Yeah. Four apples. We usually got anywhere from ten to fifteen people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that'll sound that's wonderful. Thank you for that, Mark and Pat. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Um okay, the next thing would be Joanne Sensitivity Circle. Uh do you want to speak about anyone you'd like to have as, as a guest I, or I I did not have anything to bring no for this. Okay. I was also thinking that it would be a sh have to be a shorter meeting because of the, the guest. So I knew there's a lot more on it. Ah. Okay. So you don't want to talk about whether or not you'd like to have a guest and you can bring that into the next meeting? Yeah, for, right. For this time. Yeah. I'd like to bring, bring that over. Next meeting. Yeah. Table I, I table table until next meeting. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay. And I guess we can skip over the new guests and does anyone have any ideas? I mean, I'm still trying to get um, someone from the Housing Economic and Development. I did speak with the uh, chair of the Housing Commission, and she said she would do it. I just have to set up a date with her, um, and she may be able to come in. I told her she can do it via Zoom, too, if she'd like. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's in the, the making, and that would be, I would say, for December. But as for November, I don't have anyone. I still have to find someone from the police department since Chief Mason is so busy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would he's love so to see what happens. Yeah. 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 he's reacting. Really, he's yeah, he's just so busy. I don't even know what's bothering him. He's got a big halo. Yes, <laughs> yes. I could still try to reach out to Sergeant Mommy. 
someone from the senior center come in. We've never had oh, someone right. come in from the senior yeah, center and talk about seniors and talk about the programs and everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So who would you? Would you I would take that on. Sure. Well, I'll, okay. I'll mention it tomorrow. I'll we'll probably ask. Is that okay? Yeah. And so what is yeah. what we're talking about the next meeting? Yes, yeah. I would like it for the next meeting because this year is a November a meeting. Yes. Yes. Okay. I will do that. Well, I see down here where I put reminder, confirm dates. This is supposed to say 1121. Yeah. Change from 1114. Okay. Right. Due to the town meeting. So and I, I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I noticed that. But that's one reason I wanted to make sure that the minutes have it correct. That the I reminder at the bottom of yeah. our right. so minutes is correct. Because so someone could come in. Yeah, yeah. let me know. Just just let on speak me. about the meeting um, with. Um, if you want to table, table that. for next yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're going to discuss so Mark and I spoke with Alyssa. She's the boss of oh, okay. quality. We're going to discuss that next meeting. Yeah, there are going to be time. Yeah, it's kind of the time. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can time. Yeah. I took, okay, so let's because we next. really want to discuss it. Oh yeah. And there's not enough time to get into that. And also, did you Anyone feel to discuss the next meeting? Um, the Gazette information incident, or did you want to bring it up now? Were comments, there any, were from, there any questions anyone wanted to ask about that, or do you want to leave from, that till when we have more time? Yeah, the comments from the yeah. uh, town. Do we really want to guess next month if we have all these discussion oh. uh, items oh. that we want to wait. Okay. Maybe we should wait another, you know, alternate. Mm. Well, I mean, we don't want to wait too long for some of this information because then it's going to be... Yeah, that's stale. what I'm saying, is yeah. that maybe we don't want to have a guest in November. We want to discuss these things. No, the I table. do want the guest in November. Oh. That's why I'm trying to find out now what we can discuss now okay. and what oh, we're going okay. to table because okay. I'm quite sure the person from the Senior Center is not going to take up too much time. Well, Fair enough. I yeah. can give a quick synopsis now of okay. item 7B and then maybe... If you want to bring it up as old business next time at the next meeting or the or, or the meeting after that, that's fine. And it was just that on the other uh, the smart growth committee that was looking at affordable housing. We're working with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and they worked with us, and we all crafted a an online survey for to get a sense of. Uh, Hadley citizens' um, inclinations for you know for mm -hmm. or against uh, affordable housing, and and we try to um, get a sense of some different issues with, but not go with a, a really long. I think we had ten questions, and actually it was probably nine that that were of content. I think the first one was, "Are you a Hadley yeah. resident?" And if you said no. And said thank you, and you're out. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway, we got, I'm not going to have the numbers right, but let's say over 300 responses. Yeah. Um, 300. And there were, there were a yeah. handful of um, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, um, negative responses. Um, and some that you know illustrated uh, beliefs or perceptions that we felt largely were um, misguided or untrue, and so we were going to uh, we're putting together a list of uh, what we call frequently asked questions mm -hmm. to debunk with some facts certain things like you know if you bring low-income people into town it's gonna um it's gonna cause more crime uh, it's gonna overload the school system uh, it's gonna uh, overload our infrastructure in terms of um, water and sewer um mm -hmm. and you know Things like that, yes. Um, so we we're addressing that in a 
what we felt was a positive angle by taking mm -hmm. the general gist of their question and trying to uh, mm. counterbalance that with factual. I think that's a really good yeah. response. I I would just say that I read the article with me in case we mm. took a deep dive, but <clears throat> I've just noticed there's a there are, people are entitled to their viewpoints, and there are some that are going to speak them, sure. and there's some people that will want to know those facts because they're unsure. There's others that facts won't sway them because they've right. made up their mind because of what right. they believe. Um, I try to listen to people's points of view and respect and whatnot, but I, I, I think that's a really good approach. That, in other words, this is kind of a gift because out of you know 320 responses, there's over 5,000 residents in Hadley. Right. I tried to fill out the survey and it kept asking me to pick only two or three of something when I needed I needed to act, say more than what mm -hmm. I couldn't answer the survey. We were limited by the technology. Of, well, that's what it felt like, oh, and yeah, I, I yeah, ended yeah. up I, I couldn't submit it because it right. wouldn't in that we in that case a paper yeah. one would have been better, and then you could have checked more. Well, that's just on the it. Paper. Right, and so I was frustrated because my voice couldn't be heard because it, it like well no all three of those are important. And it, right. it wouldn't let me, but that, mm -hmm. but I think it's great that you did that. And we were aware that there are people with diverse views in our town. Uh, and we all have different views. So to try to answer those questions so that people who might hear, oh, you know, is that true? Is, is this really a guy from, you know, oh, well, I don't need to read it. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, and, I with was, facts and research. I was yeah. disappointed that the headline said condemn. I think that I, yeah. I, I think they're I think one of the members in each response who I think verbally said we should condemn these. And I said, well, well, you know, we this is a survey. We ask for people. Yeah. We're not we're not asking for responses that we want. We're asking for responses. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want. That's right. You know? So and Joanne's right out of the five thousand. There were only 320 responses and only 308 were Hadley. Yeah. So I mean, this, yeah. this really doesn't speak for the whole of Hadley because as Joanne said, she she wanted to act and you know answer yeah. the questions more extensively and couldn't. Yeah, it was so, an, it was an imperfect process. Right. It was but, our first try. But like yeah. you said, now you're going to come up with the back questions mm -hmm. and, and see where that leads them. And we call this our, our first um attempt at yeah. public. Outreach, right. and our second one is going to be uh, we're talking about having small groups in person. That would be so that would be, you know, you know, and and trying to have, you know, we had talked about just one, but I pushed for having multiple at multiple venues and maybe a weekend one, maybe a night one, maybe a yeah. day one because yeah. people have yeah. different life schedules. restrictions. Yeah. It's more inclusive, tier one and tier yeah. two. <laughs> no, it, it's important to to make. To, to, if you want to find out people's viewpoints, it's to make it inclusive like that. Yeah. Let mm -hmm. there be a paper form that something yeah. can fill out. Yeah. Maybe there maybe, were papers, maybe. but maybe we didn't make that evident where they were. You know, I think we had some here. Yeah. And we were going to get some at uh, at Vesta, but I don't know if we achieved yeah. that. It's, That's it's a lot of work, and I want to give you kudos for even attempting and doing the best you could too. Yeah. yeah. Because. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the Digital Equity and Steering Committee. Yeah. At first, they only had uh, the fly the survey with a QR code, mm -hmm. but it's a digital outreach. It's trying to find out who has good internet, who doesn't. So what I did was I had Alex print out copies, yeah. right. and I hand-delivered them to Best or Winfield, whichever one you want to, to um, call. And on the survey, it says, you know, you can do this. And then on the written portion, the, the physical copy, it says, just bring it to town hall when you're done. Yeah. But what I did was I said, just leave it in the box and it'll be picked up. Oh, so we did yeah. get we did get quite a bit from that oh, because there are a lot of um, elderly people who do not have access to the internet because they can't afford it. So we're still working on that. And I'm going to deliver more physical copies to um the buildings and so forth and go to uh, Golden Court and do the same there. 
And I also gave physical copies to the library committee mm -hmm. because they also use the internet and they mm -hmm. need to, to be a part of this. So like like you're saying, physical copies are good. And like Martin said, you know, next time, you know, they yes. just, just, you know, scratch one. Mm -hmm. you know, they have to make it better for the next. Yeah. All right. For okay. Of information. I think if I was away, I think when this is published, and I didn't see it. Is this the only article in the survey that appeared in the Hampshire Gazette? It's the only one I saw. I get the Gazette every day. I try to read the Gazette every day. I completed the survey. My husband completed the survey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are not represented. Yeah. 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 We are not represented at all in this article. Wow. So I don't understand why this article has this very pointed theme. I, good point. I mean, I don't understand. <laughs> the majority yeah. of people who completed the survey made comments like this? Mm -hmm. No, is that, six. is that what they said? I didn't no, think it so. says that it appears to be the response of you know, six individuals. But then why write a whole article? Good question. See, here we go. It must have been a slow day in the news. I, I, I mean, I, I just find that it mm -hmm. really no. misrepresents our town and yes. our residents and people who, in fact, Completed the whole survey yeah. and took quite a bit of time to do yeah. it. And yeah. I, for one, don't see anything represented in this article that represents my family. So uh, I guess a really good point. I'm really disappointed. Let's mm. look at that. I mean, and this was was this on the front page at the bottom? No, I think it was. I think no, it started it on the front page on the on one little column and then bled over to like a half of a page on. An, I don't know, bank on like page five or mm -hmm. six. But I, like, no, go ahead. Well, what I was going to say, Mark, is going forward, how can one be sure that they are part of the survey instead of the small group that is, you know, publicized well, here? Like Pat said, this doesn't represent her or her family. Well, when I saw the headline, I was like, oh, you know, and then I, I, I read through it, and it's been a while. I haven't reread it. I read it that day. Well, I'm like, okay, all right. He didn't, you know, because I was like, I think it was one of those grab you with the headline. Uh, I think so. Like, I almost wonder if his editor didn't say, this needs more flash. Or exactly. if it's gonna, you know, try to uh, make yeah. it seem more, mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. debatable, more interesting. Because I don't think if you read the whole article that it's, it's really that bad. I mean, to say that, you know, if we were to say that, you know, to expect that Hadley didn't have any, Right. People that had those types of opinions, then that would be a shock. Yeah, you know? they, they said a whole lot in this article. They, they talk about clicks in Hadley and okay. a whole lot. So the information in this this article and for what Pat is saying that doesn't represent, I'm just mm. hoping going forward, you know, mm -hmm. we can put information out that no matter how it's grabbed from, it can still focus and represent us as a whole, you know, because mm -hmm. that's not, this is not Hadley. Mm -hmm. This this article is not Hadley. And it's a very important topic, and I exactly. think that the Smart Growth Steering Committee did an excellent job yeah. mm -hmm. putting together that survey, yes. identified a lot of things, maybe should have yeah. allowed. It's true. Or, they were good yeah. questions. Yeah. It's thoughtful, comprehensive, yeah. Yeah. all the issues that I've heard raised a town meeting mm -hmm. and I feel that that got lost in this yeah. and I just feel yeah. that the work you're doing is excellent and, and should to continue. Oh, I would invite you to write a letter to the editor about mm -hmm. that article and, oh. say, and, okay. you know, and say yeah because this is not what you missed was the you know all this great value you know, uh, in in mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it's an important topic, and there are different opinions, and I yeah. appreciate people's different perspectives. But is this? I've seen this gentleman, Scott. He it, he covers everything in Hadley. He does. He does so, an excellent job. Yeah, My yeah, question yeah. is, where did he get this information? Do you know? I more? think he watched the video, and he may have interviewed. So I um, he mm -hmm. wrote me and asked if I wanted to respond. And I only wrote back that I did not want to condemn anyone that right. we were going to do frequently asked questions, and I, I didn't get into any. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he might have he quotes you. Down. Yeah, he quotes you in here. But you, you raise a good point. Like, what about everyone? If this was the view of six people, 
out of 320 responses. What about the other? Yeah, I think he quoted me from what from from the video recording of the meeting. But I don't think he took any of my yeah. responses. No, I mean, it's a very important issue. It's a very complicated issue. There are many directions that housing can go into. Yeah, go and and I just think it it really is important enough to um, be described in whole and yeah. well said. Yeah, no. yeah. We need the newspaper to help people by giving exactly. them a really a fuller picture of the whole Absolutely. process and not just clickbait. Right, because you did styles of housing, you did locations of housing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really comprehensive oh, yeah. and ex. Yeah. and it just was excluded. Mm -hmm. Well, you never know. Maybe we should come together with an email to send to someone. And let him know if he's going to talk about our town to be precise so that our town can read this information and be educated and not make our town look like we live in the Stone Ages. I'll we'll have to read it again. And he, yeah, it's, it does seem like he just took bits and pieces and just created a Frankenstein. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's common to 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 well, get that's to get readership. Yeah. That's that's what happens in newspapers. I remember when I applied for um the Bachelorette or the Bachelor. Yeah, years ago, I wasn't even wanting to do it. My brother came. I wanted him to apply for the Bachelor, and because he's not from here, and I was, they said, "Hey, why don't you apply to be a one of the women?" I was like, "Okay." I had a T-shirt on. It said Paris and some jeans. And I mentioned, um, what was Donald Trump's TV show? The Apprentice. Apprentice. So I said, you know, be, they asked me why. I said, well, being on a, a bachelor would be fun, not like The Apprentice, where it's really serious. <laughs> he took my words and misconstrued oh. it and said, I didn't like this and I didn't like this person and said, I didn't say that at all, but it was already in print. So I do know about the fake news on the newspapers, you know, and how they do yeah, fill it exactly. with fluff to, to get their point across their own opinion or to make some place look like you don't want to be there. This is yeah. not where you want to go. I asked you in a particular role that they've already designed. And, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So that's, so that's that. Um, yeah. Do we have an Thank you for that report. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything after, that we want? Do we need to do? do we, we don't need to do anything to follow up, right? Okay, this, so. no, no. We just talked about it. Okay. okay. <clears throat> All right. The opening agenda. Anything? Closing agenda for anyone? No. I think we've done enough talking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Thank you for staying a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate everyone here, and I love coming to the meetings, mm -hmm. and I see this as a family. I, I really do. Everyone here makes me feel comfortable mm -hmm. and appreciated and someone that's inclusive, you know. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you guys for that, and I just, I'm happy. And like my grandson would say, Mimi, you happy? <laughs> Have her bring him one time. <laughs> yeah, I really am. It's going to be the, the youngest person to ever come to a, a session for the CD. <laughs> That'll be alive. Oh, he, he sit here, and if you ask him a question, he'll answer it. Cool. He's he's such a good boy, but I can't talk too much about him. I love him too much. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so my closing reflection that I'll add also on uh, my I, I mentioned. The opening that I went into the White Mountains last weekend. It's about mm -hmm. three and a half, four hour drive up and, and on to back. What I did in the car on the drive up and back was an audio book I highly recommend called James, uh, written by Percival, I forget his last name. But if you do audio books, I think it's really good as an audio book because the dialect is such. You know, how they speak is such an important part. It's it's um, it's the story of Jim from Huckleberry Finn, oh. written from Jim's perspective as a slave. Whoa! And it, it's fabulous. 
That's it, interesting. It's really fabulous. Yeah. I wonder what the dialect is like. <laughs> well, it talks about, I mean, I don't know what's spoil, but it talks about how it would be like, yes, a master, and then oh, say, okay. and then walk, you know, then turn the corner when there's no white men around and have a very intelligent conversation yeah. with a very, you know, Oh, and, I see. And, and yeah. Huck's like, yeah. Why do you do that? Uh, yeah, why do you do that? Yeah. And <laughs> that's, that's, that's part of it. Part Sometimes of it. you have to dumb yourself down. So that you're not a threat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 That's terrible, but that's yeah. how it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. Anyone sure. else? And you said it's called James, J-A-M-E-S? Yeah. James. Okay. Because, you know, they're I'll like, they're like okay, what's so your okay. name, Jim? James. You know, he yes. empowers himself. Exactly. Yeah. So he, that's, I'm going to yeah. definitely read yeah. that and have my grandson read it when he gets older. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? That's it? I'm glad to be here too, and I I like hearing Don talking about what's happening in the community that I live in. Yes, I'm usually at work, it which is its own little community. But no one who I work with, except my husband, actually live in Hadley. Mm -hmm. So this is where I get to hear. Mm -hmm. yes. I, and I look forward to coming too. And I'm a lot calmer than when I got in here. There's a lot going on out there. Yeah, and, that's. I mean, yeah. it's good to know that when you come here. If you have anything on your shoulders, it literally will come off <laughs> because of the aura and energy that we all exude. It makes everyone feel comfortable. So if you're feeling up tight, when you start to talk and see the respect, it goes away. It, it, so I'm it, glad you feel a lot better yeah. than you did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I could, I left, I left it out there because I was a little worried I'd be bringing it in. Good. Well, and it's not horrible stuff. It's just, it's just life. No, I know. You're, you're, you're definitely a worker. <laughs> Like, she got that. I tell you, are a worker bee. There is nothing else but that bee flying around continuously doing that job, and that that would be not really committed. So, so when you say you have something, it could be anything on your wings. But I'm glad you thank you at the door. Thank turned you. into a butterfly tonight. Thank That's you. All. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Anyone else? We yeah. an adjourn meeting. So next meeting we will meet at uh, seven o'clock on Thursday, November twenty-first. Yes, and yeah. we, which and would have been our normal, but we had pushed it away from Thanksgiving, but, but then got pushed back the because of the town. Right. Meeting. Yeah, and, and you're going to meet it. with someone, Pat, at the senior center, and you'll email us to see who's going to be able to come up before the agenda is posted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you let me know with the next couple of weeks, and right. we can get that on there. Well, yeah. Can I get a group? I was moved that we adjourn. I right. second that movement. Okay. Without further discussion? <laughs> yeah, discussion? No, no discussion. Pat? Pat. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah. Joanne. Oh, yeah. Paul, Pat. Joanne. Mark, I. Yes. All right. right. It's unanimous. Let's go. All right. Thank you all. Uh, We're closing the